What's up everybody? Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail. Welcome back to the latest episode of Mondays in Middle Earth. As I read through The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, is Silmarillion. Um, we are on chapter 8 of The Return of the King today. The Houses of Healing. And we're going to be going through this chapter. And if you've never been to one of these before, we do a bit of a sort of a live read through. I read through comment and things that go through and then cutting out all the dead space in between. So you get kind of a combination of me reading and reacting as well as sort of an overview on things. Um, episodes vary in length. Um, sometimes we have episodes that are quick because it's a short chapter. And then we have other times where an episode is really long and something jumps out at me that I want to talk about in greater detail. Um, but anyway, if you haven't already seen one of these hopefully you enjoy it if you do don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell icon so you never miss an update as we continue to read through and of course don't forget to check out the middle earth lore series as i expand upon the dwarves of middle earth and beyond and of course don't forget to support with a membership super chat super thanks patreon page let's get into this chapter eight the houses of healing which is after the big battle that took place Pelennor Fields. We've got some people have fallen um, and passed on. Other people were wounded and have been taken into the Houses of Healing. Now this is a chapter that I don't have a whole lot of memory on because I, I remember it I remember some of the things that happened in here, but what's fuzzy to me is because we get the jumping around of timelines here because he does everything that's happening in Gondor up to a point and then we switch back over to Frodo and Sam and tell their story from the beginning of the book up to sort of this and then we all reconverge and we get to like the scouring of the shire and, and the return and everything else so uh it's been a while since i've read this but i do remember being slightly confused about this the first time i read it because of the timeline and the way they do it in the films is completely different as well because they kind of wait until the end to con to join them all together so that we don't do the time jumping that we see in the chapter in any case looks like we're starting off from mary's point of view as we get started with Chapter 8, The Houses of Healing. So right off the bat, we're getting an explanation, it says here, of the many carcasses of great southern, southern monsters. Um, which is alongside all the jetsam of battle. Um, and then, of course, it says, out of the gate came bearing litters. And they picked up Eowyn. Uh, to take her back, but the king's body was covered with a great cloth of gold. So this is um, it's uh, this is basically coming onto the field of battle and, and paying homage to the king of Gondor to Theoden. Um, it's a very somber moment here as they carry the bodies into the city. Um, it seemed age long to Mary. Um, and then they're walking through a tunnel, it says. Huh. But what's interesting here is it says that as they're bringing them in, everyone bowed their heads and bared their heads and bowed. Oh! And we finally see our two friends uh, since childhood reunited. Um, Pippin and Mary have finally been reunited after all of the chaos and battle. Um Oh, this scene is pretty it's pretty interesting mary thinks he's dying like he's feeling really bad after the, you know can't use his arm and he's just exhausted and he's tired and he's been you know it's he lost theoden and he had a great love for theoden um and he's like help me pippin it's all going dark again and my arm is so cold and then he asks pippin is are you gonna bury me and pippin tells him no we're going to the houses of the healing or the houses of healing not the houses of the healing uh, this is great he meets Bergol, Baragon's son, and sends him off to find Gandalf. And Gandalf comes and uh, tells Pippin that Mary should have been born in honor into the city. But he also mentions that he has well repaid my trust. And this is a very interesting moment because Gandalf basically says here, if, if Elrond had had his way, he wouldn't have sent you to. Um, but because he listened to me... Um, Look at where we are, and you two are still alive, and all of these things happened. Because ultimately, Mary did have a great deal to do with the killing of um, the Lord of the Nazgul, because even though it was Eowyn who struck the final blow, it was Mary who distracted him from behind as well. So um, all uh, coming together in such a way. Good, good stuff. Food for thought. 
So this is where I'm, I'm remembering back here, um, but it says Faramir and Eowyn and Meridoc were laid in the beds in the houses of healing. And it says here, though all the lore was in these latter days fallen from its fullness of old, meaning that it wasn't as good as it used to be because many things had been forgotten. It says the leechcraft of Gondor was still wise and skilled in the healing of wound and hurt and all such sickness as east of the sea mortal men were subject to, save age, old age only. Um, for that, they had found no cure. Um, and indeed, the span of their lives had now waned to little more than that of other men. So it's a very interesting segment here because they're talking about um, all of this old ways and the old blood and the, the weakening of things and the watering down of everything. It says here, um, those among them who passed the tale of five score years with vigor had grown few, so a hundred years, and save in some houses who had pure blood. Um, interesting. It says here, though, that there was a malady here that they could not cure, and they were baffled by it. They called it the Black Shadow, for, for it came from the Nazgul. Um, and so it seemed to them that Mary and um, Eowyn had been struck. But you also have to think about the fact that they went up against the Lord of the Nazgul, like the, the literal Witch King of Angmar, and he was way beyond a normal Nazgul. Like he was a sorcerer in his own right, with great powers at his disposal. Um, and not to mention he had been infused with the power of Sauron. So it it's... Yeah, it's, it's kind of a no doubt that you guys are feeling kind of crummy after you literally stuck them. And, and it's kind of like if you've ever played an MMORPG or something and there's a damage shield on the on the, the mob. He had a damage shield. Big, nasty damage shield. It says here, though, that Faramir burned with a fever that would not abate. That's not good. Oh, I forgot all about this. So there's a lady... And it says an old wife, Eorith, the eldest of the women who served in the house, who looked on Faramir as he's laying there, burning up a fever. And she basically gives this speech that says, I hope he doesn't die. Um, I wish that we had one of the kings of Gondor from back in the day, because it is said in the old language, in the old lore, the hands of the king are the hands of the healer. And so the rightful king will be known, right? This is how the rightful king would be known. This comes from the mouths, the mouth of this old woman. And Gandalf, like, stands up and he's like, aha! And he tells her, he says, men may long remember your words, Eorth, for there is hope in them. Maybe a king has indeed returned. Or have you not heard the strange tidings that have come to the city? So he's acting all coy and everything else. Um, and it says here, he went out in haste. Uh, because, of course, he's he's got to go find Aragorn at this point. Because it just came into his mind, oh, if that's what these people are saying, if I can show them that the hands of the healer, you know, that just wait, just wait. It's it's going to get good, I promise. <laughs> There's a really good section here with um, Aomer and Aragorn and Imrahil as they draw near the city. Um, they're getting closer. They've got all their knights in tow, all their captains. And Aragorn gives this really big speech when they get to the gates. And he does have this moment where he says, I fear that if I enter the city unbidden, um, this city that's been guarded by the stewards for so many years, then I'm going to cause problems because there's going to be doubt and debate. Um, and that shouldn't happen while the war is going on. Um, so I'm not going to enter into the city, nor am I going to make any claim until after we deal with Mordor. And see what's going to happen with it. That way, there's no problems. I don't want to be, and I don't want to add gas, you know, gas to the flame that's causing right now. Um, so my men are going to pitch their tents outside of the city, and I will wait here until the Lord of the City comes out to me, and we'll deal with it then. But only after we've dealt with Mordor. But you know, Amor responds to him, and he's like, "You've already raised the banner of the kings and displayed the tokens of Elendil's house. So why would you wait?" Um, and why would you want those to be challenged? You should go in and make yourself known and take claim of this city. Um, but again, he's he's like erring in caution and saying, I really I don't want to cause any strife between men right now. I only want our focus to be on the enemy because we need to kick Sauron's butt. Um, so they don't know that Denethor is past yet. 
And Immerhill tells him he doesn't want him to remain at the beggar. Remain at the door like a beggar, sorry. And Aragorn says, I'm not a beggar. I'm a captain of rangers who is unused to cities and houses of stone. And he commanded that his banner should be unfurled. And he, and he did off the star of the North Kingdom and kept gave it to the keeping of the sons of Elrond. So he's coming in very unassuming. Doesn't want to be known as anything other than a ranger from the north until such time as they deal with Sauron. And I mean, it's an, I don't remember any of this from my previous reads throughs and they definitely don't talk about that in the film in this way. Um, but this is something that even though he knows who he is and he knows why he's here, he's definitely come back to take the city, you know, and be and claim it as the King. He's doing so in a way that is going to try to keep that, you know, now's not the time to divide focus. Now's not the time to, deal with stuff like that that's a pretty smart move oh so amor didn't i forgot about this amor amor i forgot about this from a couple chapters ago amor didn't realize that his sister was still alive because when last he saw her on the battlefield um so when they tell him that she's in the houses of healing he he's like oh yeah he says hope came unlooked for to his heart and with it the bite of care and fear renewed and that's when they find Gondor and they think that the steward that the guards are telling them about is Denethor, but it's actually Faramir. So this is when they find out that Denethor is gone. <laughs> so that they're in the houses of healing and Emer Emerhill's giving this speech about how, you know, Gondor, the leaders of Gondor and Rohan have both fallen. Who's going to rule the city in the meantime? And shouldn't we send for Aragorn? since the lord of the rohirrim is here er, er, you know amor and it says there was a cloaked man amongst them and it says he has come and they and he's, he stepped into the light of the lantern by the door they saw that was it was aragorn wrapped in his lorian cloak and it says he had no other token than the green stone of galadriel and only because gandalf begs me to do so he says he says, for the present, I am not but the captain of the Dunedain of Arnor, and the lord of Dol Amroth shall rule the city until Faramir awakes. But it is my counsel that Gandalf should rule us in these days and follow, in the days that follow it, and our dealings with the end. And they all agreed to it. So this is really smart. So they're establishing that they're going to put a, um, I forget the word for it now that, I'm, now that I'm reading this, but they're putting Gandalf up as like, you know, the steward in the meantime, while Faramir is healing and, and everything else is really cool. But Gandalf has other plans here, because remember, the whole reason he wanted Aragorn here in the first place was because of what the old lady said. Um, you know, <laughs> the hands of the king are the hands of a healer, and so shall the rightful king be known. Um, oh, and so this is when Merry and Pippin see him. <laughs> so this is interesting because um when Merry and Pippin address Aragorn, they don't call him by any of his titles. They call him Strider. And it says that Emerald Hill is like he's he's somewhat bothered by this, but also confused because when he looks to Aomer, he's like, Is this how we should be speaking to our king? Uh, maybe he's gonna wear his crown in a different name. And Aragorn turns to him and he lists all of his titles off. And yes, I'm known as this, 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 and this. But Strider shall be the name of my house. And in the high tongue, it won't sound so bad. And so tell Kontar I will be and all the heirs of my body. So tell Kontar in the high tongue is Strider. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that part. So this is when Aragorn sends the old lady for King's Foil or Athelas. This guy comes in and he's like, Your lordship asked for King's Foil, or Athlas in the Noble Tongue, or to those who know someone of the Valinorian. And Aragorn's like, I don't care what you call it. I don't care if you call it Asa and Arian or King's Foil, so long as you have them. Don't don't give me. I don't need it. Just give me what you got, man. <laughs> oh, man. So he literally just came in to say, we don't have any. <laughs> and Gandalf yells at the dude. He's like, in the name of the king, go and find some old man of less lore and more wisdom who keeps some in his house. <laughs> <laughs> so Aragorn literally kneels down beside Faramir, puts his hands on him, and, and just starts basically meditating over him at this point. And until... Um, we do get Bergul coming in with six leaves, not fresh, from two weeks ago, 
And Aragorn says, that's okay. I love the description they give for it. When he cast the leaves into the bowls of steaming water that were brought to him, at once the hearts were lightened, for the fragrance that came to each was like a memory of dewy mornings, of unshadowed sun, and some land of which the fair world in spring is itself but a fleeting memory. These are some of the, these lines of text are some of the reasons why Tolkien has stood the test of time and has been called like the greatest book of the 20th century. And you know, it, it's there are great fantasy authors out there. We've talked about them on this channel, but mastery of language is one of the reasons that Tolkien you know has that revered spot and also because he spent so many years like honing in on like the perfect language and this is when Fairmer awakes it says my lord you called me i come what does the king command <laughs> this is great walk no more in shadows but awake and this is when everybody sees that he healed Faramir, and this is when oh, he is the king you know um, that's crazy. <laughs> and the old lady's like, King, did you hear that? What did I say? The hands of a healer, I said. And it says, soon the word had gone out from the house that the king was indeed come among them. And after war, he brought healing and the news ran through the city. So Gandalf's gamble paid off here in spades because this is literally what he was hoping for. Oh, it's Gandalf who gives the speech. I thought it was Faramir. This is how long it's been since I read these um these books this is the part here though where it says because they used this line of dialogue in in the two towers film warm tongue said it gandalf says who knows he says my lord if your sister's love for you and her will still bent to her duty had she, had not restrained her lips you might have heard even such things as these escaped them but who knows what she spoke in the darkness alone in the bitter watches of the night when all her life seemed shrinking and the walls of her bower closing in about her a hutch to trammel some wild thing in so i was thinking it was Fairmer who had said these words looking over her but it was actually gandalf who was speaking them but i love the way they transposed them in the film um and and had warm tongue saying them in a very creepy way oh, so aragon talks about here how he might have the power to heal her body but um her spirit is another question altogether so he then he does his thing meditates over her with the leaves and then calls to her and then he places her hands in amers and pass and says he says call to her and pass silently from the chamber and she finally awakes at her brother's uh, calling <laughs> so as as aragorn does his healing magic with mary mary it says mary's eyes wake and, and he goes i'm hungry what time is it <laughs> oh, he says i want supper first and after that a pipe no no not a pipe i don't think i'll smoke again and why not says pippin oh this is kind of sad he says well answered mary slowly he's dead it's brought it all back to me and he said he was sorry he'd never had a chance of talking herb lore with me and almost the last thing he ever said I don't think I'll be able to smoke again without thinking of him. And that day, Pippin, when he rode up to Isengard, was so polite. And Aragorn responds, smoke then and think of him. For he was a gentle heart and a great king and kept his oaths. Every time I do the Theoden stuff, man, I get tears in my eyes. Oh, he rose out of shadows to a last fair morning. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow, they get me every time, dude. Tolkien, Tolkien, you beautiful bastard, you. <laughs> oh, my God. This is hilarious. If Mary says, if Strider will provide what is needed, I will smoke and think. I had some of Saruman's in my backpack, but I don't know what became of it. I don't <laughs> Miragorn says, Master Merrydock, if you think that I passed through mountains in the realm of Gondor with fire and sword to bring herbs to a careless soldier who throws away his gear, you are mistaken. <laughs> if your pack has not been found, then you must send for the herb master of the house. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, they do have some long bottom leaf. Good deal. Okay, so here Aragorn is going out 
uh, with the sons of Elrond. And it says here, they labored into the night and word went through the city that the king is indeed come again. And they named him Elfstone because of the green stone. And says here, so the name which it was foretold at his birth that he should bear was chosen for him by his own people. So the prophecy came true. And it says, oh, this is really cool. When he could labor no more because he was tired, he cast his cloak about him, slipped out of the city, and went to his own tent, just put on it, and slept out in the field. In the morning, the banner of Dol Amroth floating from the tower. Men looked up and wondered if the coming of the king had been just a dream. Ooh. So that was a powerful chapter, another one that brought tears to my eyes. Up next is Chapter 9, The Last Debate, which will be next week. Remember, these come out at Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Central as we continue to do the Mondays in Middle Earth show. I have no idea how long this is going to last, probably throughout 2023, because I still have to get through the last half of The Return of the King, and then we're getting into the Silmarillion. And then if we continue to keep getting deeper into Middle Earth, who knows where we'll go from this. If you like this, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Support the channel, please. Super thanks, super chats, super stickers, all those things. There's memberships, Patreon page. Hopefully we'll join you in the Discord as well. And I'll see everybody in the next episode next week. Thanks for reading, everybody. Happy reading, happy viewing. Until next time, cheers.